Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Homie Hector here. Today I got this 2015 Honda Civic with some electrical issues. So the customer thinks that he has a battery drain on his car because he already changed the battery twice. He changed the starter and at times he still has problems starting the car. So in today's video, we're going to see if this car has a battery drain, also known as a parasitic drain, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of it. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So the first thing I always do, I went around and make sure that nothing was staying on. Make sure that there was no lights inside the car that can be draining the battery. But I figured that if there was a light staying on, the customer would see it. Make sure there's nothing connected into the power outlets. No dome lights that are staying on. Like this one in the back is on because I have the door open right now. But as soon as I close the door, it'll turn off. I also checked this trunk light and made sure that it wasn't staying on. And to do that, I closed the trunk and I put this back seat down. And just make sure that the light isn't staying on. And as you can see, it's off. All right, so there's no lights that are staying on that could be draining the battery. So now let's go under the hood and set up for the parasitic drain test. Okay, so all I'm gonna be using to check for the battery drain is just a regular multimeter. This is a Fluke 115, and I'm gonna be using a switchblade battery disconnect type tool. So what this is gonna allow us to do is set up the multimeter in the amp setting so that we can put it in series and check for a parasitic drain without disconnecting the battery and possibly losing that parasitic drain. All right, so this is it right here. All we do is install the battery disconnect tool in between the battery terminal and the post. So now I can easily open the circuit, install a multimeter in series, and this way we can check for a battery drain. So with the switchblade installed, I can drive the car, use the accessories, and mimic what the customer would do on a day-to-day -day basis so that we can try to duplicate the customer's concern and find this parasitic drain. All right, so to do our testing, we're gonna need access to this fuse box right here. So we're gonna need the hood open. And we're also going to need access to the fuse box that's under the dash. So we're going to need this door open. Now, if we have the door open, the lights are going to be on on the dash. The lights are going to be on inside the car. And that's going to throw our readings off. And the car is also not going to go to sleep. So we got to make the car think the hood is closed and the door is closed. Now, depending on what circuit is causing your battery drain, you may or may not need access to the back of the car. Sometimes there's modules under the seats, under the back seat, door locks, window switches. So you might need to open the back doors as well. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is close this door latch right here. That's gonna make the car think that this door is closed. And we got a switch here that is pushed in when the door is closed. So we gotta keep this switch closed. All right, and to keep that switch closed, I'm gonna use one of these clamps right here. I'll put a link down in the description so that you guys can check them out if you wanna pick some up. So now the car thinks that this door is closed because I got the switch closed and I have the door latched. We're gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. Make sure it's in all the way. And we're also gonna close the switch. All right, so switch is closed, door is latched. Now we gotta make the car think that this hood is closed. So I gotta either latch this down or do a bypass on the hood latch switch. And all I'm gonna do is install a jumper wire on the pins of this connector, and that's gonna make the car think that this hood is closed. Now make sure that whatever you install in there doesn't spread the terminals open, because it'll damage the connector. Okay, now that the hood and the doors are taken care of, I can install the multimeter and set up for the parasitic drain. Now check this out. Something interesting that I found as I was doing a walk around is this. I have the remote in my hand and as I'm walking on the driver's side, nothing happens. Now over here on the passenger side, see that? It senses the remote and it unlocks the doors. So if you got a smart key like this with keyless access, you wanna go ahead and lock the car and then keep the key at least five feet away from the car so that the car doesn't sense the remote and it messes up your readings. Now, I don't know if it's normal that I walk by the driver's side and nothing happens, but on the passenger side, it unlocks the doors. All right, so that might be a clue as to where our parasitic drain is at. All right, so first things first, you wanna move this red lead from the V-hole to the A-hole, okay? So we're gonna put that in there so we can measure amperage. And before you do that, you wanna make sure that your fuse that's inside your meter is actually good so that you can use it in the amperage mode. All right, so I'm gonna set my meter right there. So just like that. So right now with the switch closed, I can start the car. All the current is going to flow through the switch and it's not going to burn the fuse on the meter. Then once I'm ready to test, I can lock the car, put it to sleep, open up the switch blade. When I open it up, all the current flow is going to flow through the meter and we're going to see if we have a parasitic drain. So my meter is on amperage right now. I'm going to go ahead and lock the car. You can see a little bit of current flowing through the meter, but I want all the current flow. So I'm going to open this blade up and if we have a drain, we're not going to lose it. So you can see right now it's at 0.20. I'm going to open it. There's one amp. A normal parasitic drain reading on this car is about 27 milliamps. 
and you'll see it on the meter as 0 0.027. All right, check it out. It's been about a good 30 minutes. And as you can see, my multimeter even turned off because it has a feature that where if you leave it on for so long, it automatically shuts off so that it doesn't kill the battery. So what I'm actually gonna do is turn it back on and hopefully our drain is still here. And yep, our drain is still there. We got about 300 milliamps. Our drain is here. So now let's figure out what circuit this drain is on. All right, so I'm gonna start right here at the fuse box that's under the hood. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can start pulling fuses, but there's a good chance that if you pull the fuse out that has a drain, you're gonna lose the drain. And when you reinstall the fuse, that drain's not gonna come back. I'm gonna get another multimeter and I'm gonna do a voltage drop across the back of the fuses on those little pins. And we're gonna see which one has the parasitic drain. All right, so I got the two multimeters right now. I'm gonna set the black one to read voltage or millivolts. Okay, so right here we have it on volts and you can see we still got the drain here. We got about 280 milliamps of current flowing. So I'm gonna start way here at the bottom. This is fuse 29, 10 amps. And I'm starting here because fuse 29, 10 amps is very common on these Hondas. You can see we got about one millivolt and that should not be there. It should be at zero. I'm gonna go through all the fuses just to show you. And as you can see right there, zero. The next one up is a 20 amp. You wanna make sure that you're actually making contact with the little terminals on the back of the fuse. Next one is 15 amps. Next one, 20 amps, zero. Next one is 15, zero. So let me go through all these fuses and then we'll focus on fuse 29 with the 10 amp. All right, so I just went down the line, checked all the fuses and fuse 29, 10 amps, right here all the way at the bottom is the one that has voltage drop across the fuse. And just to show you that this is the one that's draining our battery, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that fuse out and we're gonna see this amperage reading drop to a normal reading. So fuse 29, 10 amps comes out and that reading is gonna stabilize right now. If you just watch it, we're at 125. And remember the normal reading is 0 0.027, about 27 milliamps. Right now we're at 35, that's actually pretty good. And it just went down to 0 0.001. So now let's see what's on fuse 29, 10 amps. All right, so now we know where our battery drain is at. It's on fuse 29, 10 amps. We also know that fuse 29, 10 amps powers up. It powers up a lot of things. So now how do we go about figuring out what's causing our drain? I would actually start with the easiest module to get to. And in this case, it's either the sunlight sensor or this master power window switch. All right, so I'm gonna remove this switch and disconnect it and see if our drain is still there. And this is why you need to leave the door open and make the car think that it's closed. And our drain is still there. So this master window switch is not the issue. Let me plug it back in and I'm going after the sunlight sensor. All right, so here's that sunlight sensor that fuse 29 feeds and pull it up. And we're gonna pull it out of here. Let's go check out the drain. Sunlight sensor disconnected and the drain's still there. So that sunlight sensor is not our guy. Let's see what's next on the list. We got the information display unit, the gauge module for the tech and the gauge module for the speedometer. We have the radio, we got the keyless access control unit which lives under the dash and we have the DLC. So what do we go after next? There's center junction box one over here on the right side and there's center junction box two up here on the left side. If I go to center junction box one and disconnect it, I'm eliminating that sunlight sensor, the radio, the keyless access control unit and the DLC. So I think that's gonna be our next move. We're gonna go find center junction box one under the dash and unplug it. And this way we can eliminate four potential causes. All right, so I'm under the dash looking straight up. This little box right here with all these connectors on it, that's our center junction box one. If you look further up, that's our keyless access control unit. And then our junction box number two is right above that steering joint. Now, if you look at this junction box, it has 10 little connectors and those little connectors can be a pain in the ass to remove. So what I did was I removed the cover. There's two clips on this side and there's two clips on this side, took off the back cover, and then inside there's a little circuit board. 
I took off that circuit board and by taking that board off, I disconnected every connector from the junction box. So now let's go check out the drain and see where we're at. And let's take a look. Hey, check it out. Gotcha, bitch. No more parasitic drain. So what did we get rid of? The ambient light sensor. We got rid of the radio. We got rid of the keyless access control unit. And we got rid of the DLC. Four components are gone. Now, which one is causing our drain? We already disconnected the ambient light sensor, so that's not the issue. We got the DLC, we got the keyless access control unit, and we have the radio. So my next one is gonna be the keyless access control unit since it's right above that junction box. Now I'm gonna put this little circuit board back. I'm gonna put the cover on the junction box, and then I'm gonna disconnect the keyless access control unit. All right, junction box is put back together, and our drain is back. You can see right there about 280, 290. So my next step is to go after the keyless access control unit and see if our drain goes away. All right, so I got one of the connectors unplugged. All right, so now let's go check the drain. The drain is gone. This means that our keyless access control unit is the one draining the battery. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the module is bad. It could be the module itself. It could be an input to the module. So we got to see what's on that connector right there. So right now what I'm gonna do is take that connector that I unplugged, plug it back in. I'm gonna take the next one, unplug it, see what happens. Plug that back in, take the next one, unplug it, and see what happens. Then we'll go look at a diagram for the keyless access control module. So let's go back under the dash. All right, that one's plugged back in. All right, so I got the second connector unplugged. Now I'm gonna check to see if the drain is back. All right, so this is with connector number two on the keyless access control module. The drain is gone. All right, so the middle connector is plugged back in. All right, here's the last connector, connector number three. All right, so now with that connector unplugged, let's go back and check the drain. Check that out, we still have a drain. So two of the connectors on the keyless access control module get rid of this drain. One connector doesn't, as you guys can see. So now we got to go see what's on those two connectors so we can find the cause of this drain right here. Here we have the keyless access control unit. Here's connector B and here's connector C. All right, so connector C is the last one that I unplugged. This one does not get rid of our drain. Our drain is gone when we unplug connector B, which is the one in the middle, and it's also gone when we unplug connector A. So something on connector A and connector B is draining our battery. And so if you look at this diagram, you can see that we have the front passenger and driver's outer door handles. We got the trunk lid outer handle switch. And if we follow the rest of the wires up here, we have the rear bumper antenna, the middle interior antenna, front interior antenna, and the rear interior antenna. And we have the keyless buzzer, which is pretty much our beep. Okay, so how do we go about figuring this one out? Well, if we put two and two together, when I started doing my parasitic drain test and I walked on the right side of the car, the doors unlocked on their own, I don't think that's supposed to happen. And what we have here on the keyless access control unit, the front passenger door outer handle, the trunk lid outer switch, and the driver's side outer handle. And what's inside the door handle? Well, we have a lock switch, we have the low frequency antenna, and there's a touch sensor. So now I'm gonna go to the front passenger door and see what's going on with this handle right here. All right, so I got the three connectors on the keyless access control unit plugged in. As you can see right there, we got the parasitic drain going on. So I'm gonna go over to the front passenger door. And as you can see right there, we still got a drain. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna remove the door panel on the inside so that I can access the connector for the door handle. This connector right here is for the door lock actuator and the connector that I'm looking for is inside of here. Here's a connector for the outer door handle. Remember that handle has the touch sensor, it has the antenna, and it has a lock switch. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it, and let's see what happens. There it is, and check it out. The drain went down to 145, went down to 50 milliamps, 60. Now remember 27 milliamps is what we want. Now we got nine milliamps, 15. That right there is what's causing our parasitic drain. Gotcha, bitch. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and order a door handle. We're gonna replace it and then we're gonna verify the repair. That right there is crazy. If I didn't know about cars and you came to me and you said, your outer door handle is draining your battery, I'd look at you and say, 
Estás pendejo, güey. Estás pendejo. Look, it's not plugged in. No battery drain. Plugged in. And the battery drain comes back. That right there proves 100% that this outer door handle is causing our parasitic drain. Let's change it out and finish this one up. I just went in there and Hector is gonna be running three Honda Civics with spooning. Hector call my phone straight from Mexico. Pull up in that phone, they like, there he go. Hector call my phone straight from Mexico. Hector call my phone straight from Mexico. Pull up in that phone, they like, there he go.